Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Amedio602 and today we're going to talk about how score streaks work in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. For anybody who's new to Black Ops Cold War, the score streak system was completely redone this year. They definitely behave a little bit differently than they have in the past. What you're watching in the background is a 27 gun streak in a match of domination on the map Moscow. And I thought it would be fun to sit with you guys here and go back through this gameplay and talk about how the scoring works. Because going on something as long as a 27 gun streak doesn't happen very often, and it's worth a lot of points. And for anyone who's been playing Cold War since it came out, you've probably noticed a few games where you have a score of 10 or 15,000 points, maybe even more. And then the very next game, you feel like you perform just about as well, but you only have a score of 4 or 5,000 points instead of 10,000. So today's video is going to discuss exactly why it is that this happens, and how many points you can expect to get on a certain streak. And spoiler alert here folks, the longer streak you go on, the more points you get cumulatively. And I believe that the reason Treyarch did this is just to make it so that those higher streaks you can only get if you go on a longer streak. But we're going to cover lots of different ways to get score in this game. The first thing I want to cover is that if you do something like capture a neutral flag, so whether this is the A, B, or C flag, you're going to get some number of points for that. And in past games, you've gotten more points for the initial B capture. Unfortunately, Cold War is not like that. You're only going to get 50 points no matter which flag you capture initially. But once you're capturing a domination zone that's owned by an enemy, you're going to get 200 points for that instead of the initial 50. So if you're just looking at it from a score standpoint, it's actually better to let your opponent capture the B flag right off the bat and then take it from them. You can also get points if you defend your flag successfully by getting kills on a zone that you own. And after you knock an enemy off, if you're able to deplete the zone all the way, you're going to get 25 bonus points. Playing the objective in other various modes is going to get you some score too. For instance, if you're playing hardpoint and you are the first one on the hardpoint to capture it, you're going to get 50 points for that. And you're going to get 20 points for every few seconds you're able to stay on the hardpoint. Destroying enemy player score streaks and field upgrades is also good for points. You can also use the assassin perk. This perk highlights enemies on your minimap who are on streaks, and you're going to get points based on the length of their current streak. So for example, if they were on a two streak and they lit up on your minimap because of the assassin perk, you would get a bonus 100 points for killing them. And if they were on a four streak, you would get 200 bonus points. Probably a few others that I'm forgetting, uh, definitely TDMs in there. You're going to get 50 points as a baseline for each elimination. For each elimination after the first elimination, you're also going to get bonus points as long as you got the actual kill. If you get an elimination that's just an assist, you're not going to get these bonus points and you're not going to get anything counted towards your streak, so that is one thing to keep in mind. I noticed some differences in testing different modes based on the streak you were on, but only up to 5. Everything after 5 that I tested had the same value, which tells me that behind the scenes Treyarch is definitely going to be tuning these modes individually. Because TDM is a little bit of an oddball, let's go ahead and cover that one first. For your very first kill in Team Deathmatch, you're going to get 50 points for the elimination, and there's going to be no streak bonus. For your second kill, you're going to get 50 points for the baseline elimination, and you're going to get 200 bonus points. Since you got 50 points for the first kill, 50 points for the second kill, and a bonus of 200 points for the second kill, that's going to bring your total score up to 300. The third kill is also worth a baseline 50 points and 250 score as a bonus. Since you already had 300 points from the second kill, this is going to give you another 300 points doubling your score and putting you at 600. Kill number 4 is going to be good for 50 points plus 300 bonus points, bringing your grand total to 950 points. That fifth kill is going to be very special in that you're going to get 500 bonus points for that one in addition to the 50 baseline points. If you're keeping score at home, that's going to bring your total score up to 1500 points. And what this means is every time you see a Bloodthirsty pop up on your screen on Team Deathmatch, you are up to 1500 score for that life. The other modes that I tested, Free For All and Domination for instance, didn't have this high of a score bonus for those first few kills in the life. In each instance that I tested, I was only able to see a bonus of 50 points. So let's go ahead and run through the same math that we just did in Team Deathmatch. Starting from a score of 0, when you get your first kill, you're going to get 50 points. And there are no bonus points for that first kill, so you're going to have a total of 50 points. Your second kill is also worth 50 points, and your bonus is going to be 50 points as well. This is going to bring your total score up to 150 points. The same is true for the third kill, which is going to bring your total score to 250 points. And the fourth kill also has a bonus of just 50 points, bringing your grand total score to 350 points. 
Just like in Team Deathmatch, when you get on a Bloodthirsty in Domination, you're going to get 500 bonus score in addition to the 50 baseline score, and that's going to bring your total score to 900 points. And I'm guessing that they did this in the objective game modes in order to encourage you to play the objective because you're going to hopefully be getting flag captures, objective kills, things like that, and that should encourage some objective play. For all the modes that I tested, once you got onto the Bloodthirsty, all the bonuses were the same, so that's going to make things a little bit easier from here on out. For the sixth kill in your life, you're going to get that baseline 50 points or 100 in free-for-all, plus you're going to get 300 bonus points. It's important to notice here that the sixth kill bonus is actually smaller than the fifth kill bonus, and this won't be the only time we're going to see the bonus go backward as we go, but let's keep going and see what it looks like from here. Kill number seven is going to get you a bonus of 350 score. Kill number eight is going to get you a bonus of 400 score. Kill number nine is going to get you a bonus of 450 score. And anything after kill number nine is where things get really crazy score-wise. The bonus for going on a 10 kill streak in every game mode I was able to test is a whopping 2000 score. So taking Domination as an example, if you have 10 kills just from kills alone and not counting any objective play or any of the other score sources that I mentioned earlier, when you get to 9 kills you're going to have 2600 points and when you get that 10th kill you're going to go up to 4650 points immediately. So just that one kill is high enough to earn a care package or any streak that costs less than that. Any kill between number 11 and 14 is going to give you 500 bonus points, which means if you're running some of the lower streaks like the combat bow, as soon as it recharges you're going to be earning that streak immediately. And if you're running something a little bit higher like the spy plane or the counter spy plane, yeah it might take you two or three kills, but you're still going to be earning those pretty much as soon as the cooldown expires. Continuing on past kill number 14, when you get to a 15 streak you're going to get another whopping 2000 point bonus. And no matter which mode you're playing, if you're able to make it to a 15 streak, that's going to be plenty of points to get the second highest streak in the game, which is the VTOL Escort. If you're playing Domination and you get to a 15 kill streak, you should have at least 8,900 score. If you're playing Team Deathmatch, your score is going to be at least 9,500. And if you're playing Free For All, your score is going to be at least 9,650. If you're playing either Team Deathmatch or Free For All, then one more kill is going to be enough to earn you the highest streak in the game, the Gunship. So if you're just looking at these streaks based on number of consecutive kills in a life, the Gunship is equivalent to a 16 kill streak in these modes. And in Domination or most of the other objective modes, if you're only getting kills, then you're going to need one more kill in order to get that Gunship, so it's going to be a 17 streak in those modes, which is pretty high and that justifies why the Gunship is so expensive. Now that we know a little bit more about how the score streak system works and how the bonus points are distributed, let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples just so we can understand the discrepancy that some players are seeing from one game score to the next. Just to keep things simple, let's assume we're playing baseline TDM here and that we're not getting score from any of those other sources we mentioned earlier. So you're not getting any score from destroying field upgrades, using your own field upgrades, destroying streaks, none of that's going to be factored into this. The lowest streak in the game, the combat bow, is 500 points, and you're going to get that after just three kills in Team Deathmatch. The second lowest streak, the RCXD, costs 800 score, and you should be there after you get to a four kill streak. The spy plane costs 1000 points, and you're going to get that after you get to a five streak or a bloodthirsty. The same is true for the counter spy plane because it's 1200 points. If you get onto a six kill streak, that will be enough to earn the armor and sentry turret kill streaks. The care package is going to come in at 7 kills, the napalm strike is going to come in at 8 kills, and at 8 kills you'll also have just enough points for the air patrol. Artillery is going to be at 9 kills in one life, and once you get to that 10 kill streak that's enough for the cruise missile, the war machine, and the attack chopper. And that's because you get that huge 2000 point bonus at 10 kills. So at the 9th kill your total score is going to be 3200 points, and at kill number 10 you're going to be at 5250 points. 13 kills is going to be enough to afford the chopper gunner at 6500 points. As we mentioned before, the VTOL escort is going to be available at kill number 15, and then at kill number 16 you should have plenty of points for a gunship. And these numbers don't seem too outrageous compared to previous Call of Duty games, especially when you take into consideration that if you die off of your streak, then you don't lose all those points, you get to keep everything you've accumulated, you're just really starting over with that bonus multiplier. So far everything we've discussed seems pretty reasonable. The issue that I have with the score streak system personally is the cooldowns for all these. 
In previous Call of Duty games, once you called in your spy plane for instance, you could earn another spy plane on the very next life. In this game, however, we have to deal with these cooldowns, and the idea behind the cooldowns is to prevent score streak spam from other players on the other team, and I can see where we definitely need this with some of the higher streaks when you're earning enough for a spy plane every two kills. But at the same time, I feel like some of these cooldown timers are just a little bit too long. The spy plane, for instance, has a cooldown of 90 seconds, and the cooldown for the spy plane does not start until your previous spy plane has already expired. So once you earn your spy plane, there's really no advantage in holding on to it and waiting until you're just about ready to earn another one because that's never going to come until you call in your spy plane. Once you do call in that spy plane, you get red pings on the minimap for 30 seconds, and then you've got to wait a full 90 seconds in order to start accumulating score for the next spy plane. That means your spy plane is never going to be faster than two minutes apart, and I feel like that's a significant portion of a Call of Duty game, especially if you're a strong player and you're playing in objective mode and going for the objective a lot. There's a really good chance that when you're going for the objective, you'll be able to earn those two or three kills that you need in order to get the spy plane, but then none of your kills are going to count towards your spy plane for the next two minutes after you call it in. But that's just my opinion. I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video if you've enjoyed today's content, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And as always, thank you very much for watching.